Welcome to Flip Lesson 711. Today we're looking at word problems about combining and separating. As you look at the screen, you can first of all see the fact that word problems about combining and separating happen to follow uh, what's known as a plot. Right? Now this plot is <clears throat> is different than like plotting on a on a line graph or something like that. But more the idea of a, of a storyline. So it's kind of connecting that idea of literature storyline. Word problems have a storyline. They have a plot. There's a, a pattern that they follow. And the two that we're going to focus on today, of course, is the plot of combining and the plot of separating. So combining follows this pattern, S plus M equals T. This one should be a familiar one. And if you think hard about it, it, remain, it means that you have some plus some more and you get a total in the end and so we're looking at combining with this idea let's take a, a look at an example of a combining type of problem let's see if i can get this window out of the way so example one it says in the first half of the game heidi scored 12 points in the whole game she scored 27 points how many points did heidi score in the second half so this is an example of a combining problem. So we would say that the plot of this is combining. And you're going to see that idea come up from time to time in the lessons within the, within the textbook. But what does that mean? Since we're using S plus M equals T, right? let's look at our numbers. We got 12 points and we got 27 points. So where do these numbers fit in? All right, we can see 27 is a total, so we can go ahead and throw a 27 there. That one's probably the easier one, but then we look at the idea, right? First half of the game, whole game, and so second half is what we're looking for. This is our unknown, and so we would say that our S ends up being 12 plus our unknown of the second half, which is M, and really this idea right here can be any letter you choose, right? I like to just stick with the pattern. It seems to make sense. Now that we've figured out the plot, because we have the plot, we plugged in our numbers to the equation, and from there we can solve. And of course, to solve, we're really getting into the idea of fact families, how to rearrange things so that our variable, our unknown, is alone. And to do that, to rearrange, we're going to take the 27 and we're going to subtract 12. And that's how that works together. And so in the end, we're going to find out that we have a total of 15 points. And I'm not going to do that math. Um, you are definitely free and welcome to do that if you don't trust my, my 15 points. All right, go ahead and subtract that 27 and 12. Let's move on, though, to the next page. And I need that move so I can actually advance the slide. Our second equation that we're looking at, um, this is where Saxon, the Saxon book is kind of going back and forth. In fifth grade, it was this, this idea, Sal. In the sixth grade book, it's the bar. In the seventh grade book, it's also bar. And you're going to find out next year, they go back to the Sal. But in general, we have these equations, these patterns, these plots for separating. Of course, separating is the one word that I always spell wrong, but I think I got it right this time as we look at this idea. So what do these equations mean? What do these patterns, these formulas mean? Right? In fifth grade, you learned that you have a, a starting amount. Some went away, right? and then you have what's left over. And of course, that is a, a very valid pattern. I find this one a little bit confusing because it the S is so similar to the S plus M equals T. So instead of that, I, I do prefer this one just because the letters are different and allows you to, to think about things in a different way. So here, B stands for beginning amount, A stands once again for someone away, and R stands for what remains. And so we're going to have a plot of separating. What does that look like then? says, Tim baked four dozen muffins. He made a platter with some of the muffins and gave them away to the school back sale. Man, there's a spelling error. That's 
probably just say bake sale. That would make a lot more sense. He had 32 muffins left, which he packed in freezer bags to store in the freezer. How many muffins did Tim give away to the bake sale? All right, I got it right that time. Right? We already understand the pattern as we've talked about it. Obviously, it's always easier when it flows like that and you just know the next example is going to be that. So let's throw our bar up there. And from the bar, we want to say, okay, do we have a beginning amount? All right? Beginning amount, right? Four dozen muffins. Four times a dozen, four times 12 gives us 48 muffins. All right, he made a platter with some of the muffins and gave them away to the school, All right? So that becomes our unknown. What went away? Because our next number, our 32, tells us he had 32 muffins left over, which he freezes. And so we have that for our equation to be able to solve this. And then, of course, we go to our fact families and we look at this and we say, okay, how do we rearrange this to get A alone? And in the end, we're going to start with our bigger number, subtract a smaller number, and get what went to the bake sale. And in the end, we're going to come away with an answer of A equals 16 or 16 muffins. And so we have that idea. All right, these ideas are not new. They're, they're definitely a review. It's always good to know those patterns is a nice refresher. And so I give you this sample to get you on your way as you're working with those plots. Right? That idea is kind of new, calling them plots um, of combining and separating. So first thing you got to figure out is what is the plot? Is it combining or separating? And then of course find your equation and solve. That is it for lesson 711.